Yo, what's up? It's your man, Mr. Tim Swain. This is the TNT Journey to Africa. Wakanda forever. I got too much grit. I got too much grit. I ain't got work now. I got too much grit. I got too much grit. And I ain't even sorry now. I got too much grit. I got too much grit. You know what? It has been a year since I left my full time job with benefits and all of that to walk into the unknown and start building this nonprofit organization. And I've learned a lot in this past year. I don't know when it's time for you to transition into the next phase of your life, but for me, I learned six major things in this past year, and I'm gonna share them with you. First thing I learned was there's never a perfect time to walk down an imperfect path. When I left my job, my wife and I spent about a year and some change planning what that transition was going to look like. More and more, we started talking about it and really getting confirmation that, that this is it. Like this is our life's mission. We got to a place of recognizing that, you know, if, if we don't dive in this head first and go all in, then there's no way we're going to build this up to uh, the greatest level of impact that we want to see it. And I realized, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many things I could have planned out, how many things I had in place, stuff still happened that was unexpected. For example, when, when, when I started to research this process of fundraising, oh my Lord, y'all, I thought I'd be done raising the funds that I needed in about six months. Well, it's about, um, you know, six months past that six months deadline. And I just realized that the process is never going to be perfect. So if you're thinking about starting something, yes, you need to come up with a plan, but you also just need to jump in and get started. The next thing I learned was you don't need to abandon the destination just because you get rerouted. You know, anything that can go wrong will go wrong. So when 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 I stepped away from my job, I mean, I, like I said, I came up with a my wife and I came up with a financial plan. We had all these things together. Uh, but there are some things that happened that we just didn't anticipate, such as, you know, my wife transitioning from her job, you know, unexpectedly. And you, you just got to adjust. And I'm going to tell you, all there are so many days that I'm just like, Lord, you got to handle this because there are so many invariables. There's so many things I don't know. If I had foresaw all of the challenges just in trying to develop an organization that is sustainable, then I probably would have took more time trying to plan. But that's why I'm so grateful that God doesn't show you everything um, up front, because if you saw everything up front, it may scare you and you will never get started. Sure, it's taking you longer than expected. You thought you would be gone in five years. Maybe it's now seven. The things that you think will go wrong will go wrong. But guess what? You just adjust and then you keep moving. Don't abandon a destination simply because you got rerouted. The third thing I learned was don't cut the cocoon. The cocoon is the protective and and an insulated environment of transformation. And I was thinking about the story about a science teacher and he wanted his classroom to see the process of that caterpillar turning into a butterfly. They saw the caterpillar eating the leaves and eventually getting into making the cocoon. And then after they made the cocoon, it was time for the butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. One of the kids went up and said, I'm gonna help it. So he tries to open the cocoon a little bit and the butterfly falls to the ground and it dies. Don't cut the cocoon. This is the environment in which your transformation is going to happen. So for me, it, it's, the, it's the part of the in-between. I'm not where I was. I'm not where I want to be, but I'm in between. There are inevitably hardships, but your hardships are not indicative that you're on the wrong path. Maybe you need to uh, tailor your game plan. Maybe you need to transition to something else. Maybe you're doing it in the wrong way. You just need to adjust a little bit. But so many times people want to cut the cocoon. They, they want to get out of the transformational hardships, the challenge space, because it's uncomfortable. The cocoon is the process that is strengthening you and developing you for the next place that you're going to be. Don't interrupt your own development and growth. The next one is big. And I had to be reminded of this. God is faithful. I mean, listen, I don't even have to say nothing else about that. Y'all, in this past year, I felt like I've been in an intensive college curriculum for building a business and building a nonprofit organization. The personal and professional growth has been tremendous. And I am a natural worry warren. And God has continually shown me that he is faithful. The truth is, whatever God has given you a desire and a calling to do, 
he is going to enable you to have the capacity to do it. It doesn't mean that he's going to open the door. It may mean that he may open your eyes to see where there is a door. The Bible says that 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 your gift makes room for you and that it'll put you in front of great men. The cocoon is the process that helps you develop the character to stay in the presence and know what to do when you're in front of those great men. The grace of God and God's faithfulness is your ability to even be positioned in front of those individuals. So just recognize, man, God is faithful and he will help you through this transitionary period. One of the final two things I learned was in order for me to get to the next place in my life, I realized I cannot get there alone. There's an African proverb that says, he who wants to travel quickly goes by himself. But he who wants to travel further takes others with him. You can go out here and start something and make it happen by yourself. That's dope. But if you're really trying to expand and accelerate and enhance your influence, you're going to need other people to do that. I mean, listen, I am a first time starter of a business slash nonprofit organization. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I need experts. I have been talking to so many people about the basics, the mechanics of, you know, HR processes and administrative processes and fundraising processes. You cannot accomplish everything you want to accomplish by yourself. God has created a, a social and, and spiritual ecosystem where we're supposed to be interdependent on one another. That means that you got something that I need. I got something that you need. We're going to work together to make this thing shake. Don't forget to reach out and ask for help. Sometimes it's as simple as calling somebody up that has an expertise in the area that you don't have an expertise in and saying, hey, I need some help. And you'll be surprised at how many people really will sit down and have a conversation with you uh, if you just simply ask. And the last kind of impactful things I learned is to start reevaluating my relationships. I remember hearing a long time ago that there are kind of like three kinds of relationships that you can have. There are relationships that are, you know, positive, that add value to your life. There are relationships that are negative, that take away from your life. And then there are relationships that are just neutral. They don't add, they also don't take away. They're just kind of, you know, in that gray space. One of the reasons that I had to start reevaluating my relationships is because my time became more and more limited. And I also had to insulate my world um, where people were headed in the same direction as me. In some of my circles, I was the only person that was promoting health and wellness, exercise and trying to eat right. In some of my circles, I was the only person that was really trying to accelerate my financial wellness. That was problematic. I realized in some of my circles, I was the only one that was not working a nine to five job. That was problematic. When you're evaluating your relationships, the positive relationships are pretty easy, right? You, you know who add value to your life. The negative relationships are pretty easy too. You know who's taking away from you. The neutral relationships, this is where the problem lies. Because the neutral relationships are the relationships where they don't add nor do they take away. They're just kind of there. The way that you evaluate a neutral relationship is you ask yourself, if this person were to leave, what would they take away from me? And if the question is nothing, that's probably a neutral relationship. Eventually, you're going to have to get to a place in your life where you need more coaches than cheerleaders. Cheerleaders are there to simply motivate, pep up, and inspire the crowd. The cheerleaders do not have any kind of significant impact on the success of the game. You need cheerleaders because you need people to tell you, baby, you can do it. Hey, man, I believe in you. But the coaches are the individuals that can also motivate, but they can give you a strategy. So many of us in our lives, we just have cheerleaders around us. But eventually, you're going to need some coaches. You need individuals that can give you an actual strategy. How many people in your life right now are cheerleaders versus coaches? I left the job a year ago, but I don't miss it one bit. And it's not that it was a bad job. It was really quite the opposite. It was a very comfortable job, but it just wasn't the destination. Think about the dopest airport you've been to. I mean, they may have museums, they got the Skyline Lounge, you can have drinks, you can have food, you can meet great people, have great conversations. But at the end of the day, the airport is just a period of transition. It's not designed for people to be there long term. Sometimes in our lives, God has us in positions where it's simply like the airport. We're passing through, we can enjoy the experience, we can take it in, we can meet some great people, but eventually, we're going to have to get on the plane 
and go to the next destination. I'm grateful for this past year of my life. It has been one of the most challenging times. I have talked to God so much. I have cried, literally tears coming down my face so much. I have stressed and worried so much, but I've also been reminded of God's grace, God's faithfulness, and I have grown as a person, as a professional, and as a leader. And my prayer is that if you're on a journey right now where you're in the in-between phase, you've come from a place, but you're not where you want to be, that you'll take these lessons I learned and hopefully it'll impact your life. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Peace.